welcome Bob Morris. Have you heard about the crazy 78-year-old grandpa that came out of retirement to become a comedian? Bob. That's me, I'm the guy. Bob, Bob Morris. So why the t-shirt? Doesn't hurt to advertise. So let me tell you why it's Bob Bob instead of plain vanilla Bob. Our first grandchild, Julian, spent a great deal of time in our house during his early years. And when he began to speak, he called me Bob Bob. I had no idea where that came from until I realized Julian was just repeating what he heard, which was something like this. Bob, Bob, bring me Julian's stroller. Bob, Bob, let the dog in. <laughs> Bob, Bob, take the garbage out. <laughs> I've been married to Susan for 48 years. <laughs> However, I have to report that our sex life is a little on the dull side. <laughs> I, I, I wonder why. Um, so, the other day she said to me, how come you always walk me to the gym and back every day? I said, darling, it's because I want to protect you from sexual predators. She said, tomorrow, please, stay home. <laughs> When I told her I spent $400 to go to comedy school, she said, that's not funny. <laughs> Let's talk about outbound messages on answering machines. They annoy me. For example, hello, we can't come to the phone right now. Duh. <laughs> you missed your cue. Uh, so, if you want to spice up your outbound messages, try a couple of these. Hello? You've reached the NSA. Leave a message. You know we're going to listen to it. Hello? Today is my heart transplant operation. <laughs> so if I don't get back to you, you'll know why. <laughs> Hello, this is your friendly drug dealer. Your stuff is ready. <laughs> Hello, I can't talk to you right now. I'm in the bathtub with another couple. Hello, this is Jeopardy. The answer is, I'm not here. So please leave a message in the form of a joke. And now for the best one. If you call my number, you're gonna hear this. Congratulations, you've reached Bob Bob Morris. Please leave a joke. Anytime. So, uh, another thing that annoys me is uh, telemarketers. So I figured out a way to get them to hang up on you. So, if you get a call from a health club, ask if they take the terminally ill. And if you get a call from a dance studio, ask if they take one-legged people. And if you get a call from a financial planner, just say, I've already outlived my money. <laughs> so another thing that bothers me is filling out forms. 
on an employment application, the question was, do you have any special skills? So I wrote down, I'm very good at foreplay. <laughs> on on a, a life insurance application, the question was, do you smoke? And I wrote down, only after sex, so no. <laughs> I, I, I was in the employment business for many, many years, and the, uh, the firm I joined, the uh, first firm I joined, was very exclusive. They were so exclusive, they didn't do business with anybody. <laughs> I must have seen a million resumes. One of the resumes had on it, uh, former stand-up comedian. So I called him up and I said, why did you stop being a comedian? He said, my jokes died. I said, what do you want to become now? He said, an undertaker. <laughs> but my very first placement was filling a carpenter's job with a fellow named Jesus. <laughs> L later on, I got a sailing job for Columbus. That worked out pretty well. Right? <laughs> we finally, I, I, we got a call from uh, Harry Houdini. He wanted an assistant. So everybody we sent him disappeared. <laughs> Which is what I have to do now because I'm hearing, Bob, Bob. Thank you very much. <laughs>